Yo, what's going on everybody? My name is Ryan, I'm a CPA, and today I'm gonna to be talking about whether or not you should put rental property or real estate under an LLC. But first, I would love it if you would smash the like button, and if you're new here, please consider subscribing to my channel, that would be awesome. And of course, leave any concerns, comments, or insults in the comments section below. All right, so today we're gonna to be talking about putting rental property or real estate into LLCs. Now you know what are the tax benefits of that, um, what are the asset protection benefits and what are the risks? Okay, so let's start with the tax benefits. So whether you own a property under your cell, your own personal name or under an LLC, there's no real tax advantage there. There's not much of a tax difference. Okay, it's really just, you know, how you uh, legally report it. But tax wise, the deductions are virtually the same. Um, if you're a single member LLC, which means that you're the sole owner of an LLC, there's not even a difference in the way that you file your taxes. Now, if you are partnering with somebody as a multi-member LLC to own a rental property, that's where the tax differences kind of change a little bit. So when you are part of a partnership, you have to file a partnership tax return before you file your personal tax return. And that's where things are different, but there's again, not much more tax benefits to doing it that way. It's just a legal thing more or less. What about an S-Corp? I get questions all the time. Should I put my rental property into an S-Corp? And the short answer is no, you shouldn't. Uh, any property that you intend to hold on to for a while, like long-term property, rentals, Airbnbs you plan on hanging on to for a while, you should not put under an S-Corp. Uh, the only time you should uh, S-Corp any like kind of real estate transactions are if you're doing fix and flips or any short-term kind of thing where you're, hang where you're buying it for a short-term, selling it, you know, not too long later. And the reason is because of this thing called a step-up basis. Now, when you hold property, like rental property or real estate, uh, if you hold on to it and then you pass away, uh, whoever inherits your property will get a step-up in basis. Now, I'm not gonna go into too much detail on that, but that's, that's a pretty big tax advantage, okay? It's, it's gonna save your inherited, your heirs, you know, thousands of dollars, maybe hundreds of thousands of dollars, depending on how much the property has appreciated in value. Now, if you put it under an S-Corp, you don't see that step up in basis anymore. And that's why we don't really recommend putting rental properties or long-term investment properties into S-Corps. Just a normal LLC would do just fine. Um, there's no tax differences because uh, rental properties or long-term investments are taxed as a passive income. Uh, and S corps, you know, passive incomes won't ha won't see any tax differences either. Uh, usually, when people say you should S corp your business, it's to avoid self employment tax. While rental properties do not incur self employment tax, that means that there's no tax differences between the two. Also, putting your rental properties into an S corp will complicate things more because uh, owners of S corporations are required to pay themselves a salary. So eventually you're gonna have to pay yourself a W-2 salary out of your S-Corp just to stay compliant. And it's just really totally unnecessary. Now, what about asset protection purposes? Now, this is where the, the lawyers and the legal team come in for you. Uh, when you have a property owned by yourself personally, you are personally uh, liable for anything that happens. So let's say you have a tenant that is, you know, coming home drunk, I mean, you might have like a crack in the sidewalk or something. She's drunk, she trips over the sidewalk, she could sue you for personal injury. Uh, ideally, you have insurance in place, uh, but either way, you are personally at risk. Now, if you have your rental property under your LLC and the same scenario happens, she can only sue the LLC, okay? And the only assets the LLC has are the property itself, and maybe a little money from the rental income. Whereas you over here, you might have your own personal residence, you have savings, retirements, all that stuff that is protected from any, from any lawsuits from your rental property. Now, simply putting your rental property into an LLC does not mean that it's protected. You have to take extra steps, like you have to make sure you have an operating agreement, you gotta make sure you operate it from a you know, proper checking account, like the LLC's checking account, any rental income and expenses have to be going through that checking account. So extra steps, you gotta make sure that you take to make sure you're fully protected. I can't stress this enough, you have to talk to an attorney 
to get the operating agreement drafted. Don't go to a legal zoom or something like that. Make sure it's properly drafted. This is not something you want to mess around with because it could cost you a lot of money in the end if you don't do it properly up front. All right, so what are the risks of doing it this way? Well, in order to talk about that, I need to tell you how you can actually put your rental property into an LLC. So there's two primary ways to do it. One is to you know purchase the property under your LLC from the get-go, get financing for under the LLC. Uh, that's a little more challenging. And the second way is to purchase the property personally. And then once the closing is done, then you quit claim deed it into your LLC. And now your LLC owns the property. Now, that is not the ideal way to do it. And I'll tell you why in a second. Uh, but first, in order to purchase the property under your LLC from the get go, you first need to identify a property and then set up an LLC for the property. You know, a lot of people just use like the street address of the property and an LLC at the end. And then you got to, you know, get a operating agreement set up from your attorney, checking account opens, and then the lender has to see if your business, your LLC has any business history. And guess what? It does not because you just opened it. And then, it has, and then the lender has to see if your business has any credit history. And again, it does not since you just opened it. So uh, the, the lender is gonna ask for a personal guarantee from you as the owner. So the lender is gonna check your credits, your income, all that stuff. And then after all that, they might lend you some money to purchase this property for your LLC. Okay, that's the cleanest way to do it, the most ideal way to do it. Uh, now, the second way that I mentioned is to purchase the property personally and then quit claim deed it into your LLC. And uh, while this is much easier because you have all the credit history, you have the income, um, you might be more likely to qualify more easily for lending. Quit claiming the deed over to your LLC will do something that's a little risky because you're financing it under your own name. Uh, if you quit claim deed it to your LLC, that means technically the lender doesn't have a collateral under you anymore. Okay. So if the lender ever finds out, they can just call your loan due and you have to pay it all right at, right at once. And while this is actually a real risk, I've never seen this happen or heard of it happening from any of my clients or anybody that I know. So just keep that in mind. It's a real risk, but I've never seen it happen. And of course, if you don't need to finance the property, if you can just pay cash for it, then this is all a moot point anyway. So again, if you can get your property under the LLC from the get go, cleanly purchase it that way, then that's the ideal way to go. If you can't, maybe purchase it personally, quit claim it over to your LLC and hope that your lender never finds out. That is the second way to go. And of course, if you inherited property that was already under an LLC, then that's you know, that's, that is what it is. So, uh, that's all I got for today. Hope that was helpful. Definitely reach out to me if you have any questions in the comments below. And again, if you're new here, please consider subscribing to my channel. I'd really appreciate that. And also if you found this video helpful, smash or caress the like button. That would be awesome. All right. Have a good one. Take care and stay safe. I hit the stage and leave with money that's a sticker She picture perfect so I told her